So sit back and enjoy the worship service. We welcome you to the Friendship Baptist Church in the Colony. Good morning. Good morning. There's a there's a song that I've heard uh, us sing sometime. We come into this place to worship Him. Well, in order to worship Him in spirit and in truth, we must be in total fellowship with Him. And in order to do that, we're just going to ask for just one couple seconds that we do that. Even uh, as we are together, we can become one. So ushers, help me. We're going to ask God's blessings upon our coming together, and then we'll go into worship. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this change, chance to worship you in spirit and in truth. So we just ask you right now that you consecrate our hearts. If there's anything of art we have against anyone, if there's anything, any sin we've committed against anyone, if we've transgressed against you and our brothers, we ask right now that you forgive us of all unrighteousness, that you create in us a clean heart and renew in us your spirit. And we promise we just will bless your name all the day long. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray a servant's prayer. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go to church. Deacon. Jesus. To God be the glory this morning. To God be the glory this morning. Give him some thanks like he did something for you this week here. Give him some thanks like he blessed you this week here. Give him some thanks like he loved the choir together this week here. To God be the glory this morning. To God be the glory for all that he's done. Brother Dana Carroll was 92 years old. 96 years old this morning. God bless you. <laughs> 96. <laughs> what a blessing. You know, in Sunday school this morning, we're studying Ezekiel. And I must have had a funny look on my face because Sister Bailey asked me, was I confused? But I really wasn't. What I was thinking about was the ladies' choir this morning. And when I looked up there, you know, water runs all the way from Psalms through Revelation, all the way through the Bible. All I could think about with the different shades of blue was living water. <laughs> living water! Living water. God bless you, ladies. You look beautiful. You look mighty good this morning. We're going to do something a little different this morning with devotion. Like everybody stand on your feet. We're going to do the 23rd sub. We're going to say it all together. God's word reads, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me, and the presence of my enemy. 
my head with oil. But runneth over. Surely, blessed, said mercy shelf, all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You may be seated. I forgot I'm Deacon Scroggers. This is Deacon Peterson. <laughs> Amen. That is my favorite scripture. The Lord talked to me about that one day. There's a part in there that says, my cup runneth over. See, in Old Testament time, if you invite somebody to your house, you give them a half a cup, that means you want them to leave. But it says, my cup runneth over. I'm going to be here a while. Right. Dana Carroll, your cup runneth over. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our Father. Father, it's again and once again, we just come before your throne of grace. Father, we thank you, Father, for another privilege to come before your holy and righteous name. Father, you touch us this morning, Father. You gave us another opportunity. Another opportunity to do what, Father? To praise and uplift your holy name. So, Father, by this breath that you allow me to breathe, Father, I come this morning praising and uplifting your holy name. Father, I don't mean to be selfish and say that I'm the only one. But we as a church, Friendship Baptist Church, we come today to praise and uplift your holy name. Now, Father, some of us still come in here with heavy burden, Father. Some of us come in here seeking a job, Father. Some of us come in here because we have family problems, Father. But, Father, the fact remains is that we're coming. We came into your house, Father. Now, Father, we ask that you look into our heart. And whatever is there that is not pleasing to you, Father, we ask that you remove them right now, Father. In the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you comfort where comfort is needed, Father. Heal where healing is needed, Father. Bless where blessing is needed, Father. Father, let your will be done this day, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Father, we ask that you bless the one that is going to preach your word this morning, Father. Father, we ask that you allow him to speak, but let us hear what thus says the Lord. Father, give us a heart and a mind to do what thus says the Lord. Father, we ask you to continue to bless Friendship Baptist Church as we go about doing what thus says the Lord. Father, we ask that you should continue to watch over us as we continue to want to do what thus says the Lord. Father, we thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're about to do. Praise Father, these and all of the best as we ask in your dollar name, precious son, Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. stand on your feet this morning. Everybody stand on your feet. Tell somebody hello. Y'all make sure y'all got a little room. Come on. Come on, make some noise, ladies. This is FPC Women's Choir. This morning.
yeah, we worship you, yeah, we worship you, yeah. We worship you, oh, 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 oh. we worship you. Hallelujah. Come on and put them hands together. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. I came in today, came in today. To, get to get my blessing. How many of y'all know when praises go up, blessings come down? No, 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 I'm going to say that again. Now, how many of y'all know that when praises go up, blessings come down? Sometimes you got to praise your way through that thing. Sometimes you got to praise him when you don't want to praise him. Sometimes you got to praise him when your lights got get cut out. Sometimes you got to praise him when you can't pay your rent. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's why I want y'all to know I got to anyhow praise. I'm going to praise him anyhow. Even if I'm not driving the Mercedes that I want, I'm going to praise him anyhow. I'm not living in that mansion I wish I had. But I'm going to praise God anyhow. Now tell somebody I got to anyhow praise. I got to anyhow praise. Come on, ladies, lift up the name of Jesus. Because you know he's worthy. You know he's worthy. Yes, he is. God is so worthy to be praised. I'm excited about this first annual Women's Day. And I love you, ladies. Amen. Listen. I got a anyhow praise on the inside. I got a hallelujah and I thank you, Jesus, and a glory to your name. people got any anyhow praise on inside I got a hallelujah and I thank you Jesus glory to your name I got an anyhow oh I got a hallelujah and I thank you Jesus Say, I got a hallelujah, hallelujah. and I thank you, Jesus, and I glory. glory to your name. I got a anyhow praise anyhow. down on the, inside. on the inside. See, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it looks like. I got a hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 On the inside. Hallelujah. I got a hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the morning. Hallelujah. In the noonday. Hallelujah. In the midnight hour. Hallelujah. Early in the morning. Hallelujah. Late in the midnight hour. I got a hallelujah. I got a hallelujah. Tell him, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. Uh, for waking me up. Thank you, Jesus. For starting me on my way. Thank you, Jesus. For putting food on my table. Thank you, Jesus. How many of y'all know God is able? You, How many of y'all know God is able? You, How many of y'all know God is able? Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For everything Thank you, Jesus. that you've done for me. Thank you, Jesus. How many of y'all know he didn't have to do it? He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. But we want to thank you, Jesus. We want to thank you, Jesus. I got a glory. I got a glory. I got a glory. Yes, I do. I got a glory.
minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Somebody been going through something all week long. And you about to throw in the towel. This is for somebody. And you just don't know what to do. But when you don't know what to do, you stand still. And you wait for God to give you the answer. How many of y'all know you just stand still and you wait on God? You wait on him. You wait on him. You wait on God. You wait on him. Jesus. So many times I wanted to say, forget it. <laughs> but God said no. He said, he said, you got to praise me when you're down. You got to praise me when you're up. You got to praise me when you're going through. You got to praise me. Hey, yeah. haven't been down to your last dime and you just didn't know how you were gonna get them bills paid oh but he'll step in on time yes he will 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 yes he will, yes, he will. yeah I want to leave you with this I want to leave you with this listen listen I gotta anyhow praise down on the inside I got a hallelujah and I thank you Jesus glory to your name anyhow praise hallelujah go on and put them hands together won't he do it won't he do it won't he do it Yes, God. Giving honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Much respect to Pastor Gregory Trotter, ministers on the roster, our First Lady, Sister Doris Trotter, brothers and sisters in Christ. These are your announcements for Sunday, November 16th, 2014. Old Time Gospel Hour, Wednesday, midweek service from 8 to 9 o'clock p.m. November the 20th. Last day to submit forms for Thanksgiving baskets. November 21st, the FBCTC Drama Ministry will present Have a Little Respect for Sister Rebecca. Admission, canned goods, or non-perishable items to support our food pantry. November 22nd, CPR First Aid Training Class. Contact Sister Gwen Carr for details or email Gwen Carr at clear.net. Christmas speeches will be available for youth ages four through 10 years old at the praise station in the Family Life Center after service. The annual Christmas program is Sunday, December 14th at three o'clock p.m. November 23rd, Thanksgiving Fellowship with First Baptist Church of the Colony at six o'clock p.m. November 25th, Thanksgiving baskets pick up from 4 to 7 o'clock p.m. Registration for the Angel Tree begins today. Please stop by the PHP table in the corridor and complete an Angel Tree form to be placed on the tree. The deadline for registration is December 14, 2014. Calling all graduating high school seniors at FPC. The scholarship ministry is requesting information for the 2015 recognition ceremony. Please contact Sister Lakeisha Wooden or email 
scholarship at fbc-tc.org. If your birthday is in December and you're interested in entering a contest to win a free cake from Thirsty Cupcake, please visit the youth table after 11 a.m. services for more information. Winners will be announced on the fourth Sunday. Sister Yvette Culver will have a book signing for her latest book, Love Letters from God, today, following 11 a.m. worship service in the Family Life Center. Your church announcements can be found in your bulletin on the church bulletin board, or you may log on to www.friendshipbaptistchurchofthecolony.org. And now, a memorable quote from our pastor's desk. Prayer should be the key of the morning and the lock of the night. These are your announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Pastor Gregory Trotter and the members and bodies of Friendship Baptist Church. Thank you and have a spiritually renewed day. Good morning, Friendship. I'm on be here on behalf of the Deacon Board and the Thanksgiving Basket. Uh, we are in the process of collecting names for the Thanksgiving Basket. The form for you to turn in your name is right outside there on the hospitality desk. Um, this coming Thursday is the deadline to turn in your requests for the Thanksgiving Basket. And on Tuesday, uh, November 25th, from 4 to 7 p.m., we will be giving out the Thanksgiving basket. Friendship, I, I cannot emphasize this enough, but we need to take care of friendship first. So that means that the basket are for friendship members only. The basket will be given out on Tuesday, November 25th, from 4 to 7 p.m. From 4 to 7 p.m. Four to seven PM. No. At seven fifteen your basket will be given to somebody else. Amen. 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 Y'all give God a hand clap of praise. Tell somebody just a little prayer and faith goes a mighty long way. morning song we want to sing for you. Hallelujah. It says, just a little prayer in faith, it goes a mighty long way. Come on choir.
How many are excited to be in the house of the Lord today? How many are excited? Thank you, Jesus. Giving all praises to God, my Father, to Jesus, my Savior, to the Holy Spirit, who is my comforter. Much respect to my pastor, Pastor Trotter, uh, to the men that labor with him in the gospel, uh, to our awesome First Lady. See you right there, the awesome First Lady. Um, to you, the Friendship family. I'm Deacon Stacy Duffy, and I'm standing on behalf of the hospitality ministry to welcome our guest. So if you're a guest for the first time, would you please stand and remain standing so that we may acknowledge you? Amen. 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 First of all, we thank you so much for stopping by here today to worship with us. We know that there are many other churches that you could have gone to today. So we thank God for sending you our way. And the last thing I would say is that our worship experience would not be the same without you. So thank you so much and have a blessed day. Friendship, would you please stand and welcome my guests, please. to God. I thank him for this day. Even though it's a wet day, this is still a day that we need to praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I'm Charlotte Stevenson, and I'm representing the women's ministry, and we just thank God today that we are culminating our conference that we had on last week, and it was Christian women working to build God's kingdom. Amen. And so this is the end result of it. But we are so thankful to all of the ladies that turned aside to be a part of this event. Amen. Amen. I'm here for a specific purpose. I won't be before you long. But we wanted to give some awards to uh, two individuals. The first award is the Titus II Woman Award for 2014. And we know what the Titus II Woman says. Amen. Amen. And the recipient is Sister Ida McBride. I don't see her, but nonetheless, we will still honor and give it to her at another time. Amen. Amen. Our second award has to do with our conference, and it's talking about a Kingdom Builder Award. Talking about Kingdom Building, we all have a part to play. And this individual goes about, anytime you see her, she is trying to encourage, Amen. she's trying to uplift, She's just doing the work of the master. So at this time, I would like for our own First Lady, Sister Doris Trotter, to come forward. not give you all that we wanted to give you on last week. We wanted to save some for this week. Amen. Because you are very special, Sister Trotter. We love our pastor, but we have to love you as well and respect you as well. And so on behalf of all of the women of friendship, and will all the women of friendship please stand? Amen.
side. Pet talk. Pastor Trotter for allowing us to do all of the things that we have done uh, for this last couple of weeks because without a supportive pastor, we could not have done that. So we we'll be thank you. Amen. Good morning, friendship. It is indeed a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Now, I get the thanks, but she gets the hat and the plaque. Okay, amen. No, I don't wear those. Amen. I'm happy. Amen. Amen. And she'll probably get a chance to wear it in the next day or two. We will be leaving, going to the state convention. And she is one of the panelists. Amen. Amen. They have asked her to be on a panel with several other pastor's wives to talk about, amen, being a pastor's wife and the things that they have to go through. Amen. Amen. I said go through. <laughs> Amen. Now, you know, that's him said that. I said go through. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you today. To all of you who are visiting with us today, we say welcome to Friendship. We're glad to have you today. Please come back and share with us again. Amen. Also, those who are joining us uh, by live streaming, we welcome you into this worship service as well. Amen. Brother Dana Carroll, 96 years old. Yeah. Amen. 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 You still hold the title of being the oldest man here at Friendship. 96 years old. Amen. He told me on last Sunday, as I was on my way out, he was standing over in the Family Life Center. He said, Pastor, I'll be 96 years old on Friday. Amen. Congratulations. We thank God for leaving you here for 96 years. Amen. <laughs> Sister Yvette Colbert, amen. This young lady is the one that the announcement was about that she will be doing a book signing following our 11 a.m. service over in the Family Life Center. Amen. She's written a book called Letter, Love Letters from God. Amen. And if you desire a copy, amen, she will personally sign, amen, your copy of Love Letters from God. Amen. amen. Deacon Peterson, our chairman, made announcements concerning the Thanksgiving baskets. Please, amen, keep those dates in mind. Also, on next Sunday at 6 p.m., we will be going to First Baptist Church here in the colony. And we need our ushers, our deacons, our ministers, our choir, our members. We need all of you as we go to share with them on next Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Your pastor will be bringing the evening message there. Amen. As we fellowship with, amen, First Baptist Church here in the colony. Also, we want to thank all of our singles who were out on yesterday for the Single Symposium. Amen. Thank God for our speakers. We had a glorious time in the Lord. Amen. So we thank God for Reverend and Sister Burt. Amen. The servant leaders for our singles and all of those volunteers. Amen. Because of what you've done and because you gave it to the Lord, I believe it was a good success. Amen. Unless... Sunday, we voted concerning our Constitution and bylaws. 
And we inform you today that they did pass. Amen. We had 218 for, only one against. Amen. But we thank God for the 218 and the one. Amen. We thank God for, amen, our constitution and bylaws. We now have new constitution and bylaws. Amen. And they will be ready for you on next Sunday. Amen. We will get all of that printed up this week, and we'll have it ready for you on next Sunday. Sunday. Amen? Amen. 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 We thank God again for our being here today. Amen. At friendship, cold, rainy, but God is still good. Amen. 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 Let me tell you the reason why I say he's still good, because the choir talked about there is a name I love to hear. Amen. Amen. And when I'm feeling down and I'm feeling out, amen, all I have to do is call on the name Jesus. Amen. It's just something about the name Jesus that makes your whole day turn around. If you've never tried it, amen, the next time you find yourself dealing with a situation, just call on the name Jesus. Amen. Because at that name, amen, I rejoice, but devils tremble because there's something about the name, amen, of Jesus. Amen. Our deacons are going to come at this time. Amen. To receive our tithes, our offering, amen, our gifts to the building fund, and our gifts as we are preparing to counsel, amen, our mortgage debt on friendship. Amen. And let me say to those of you who are participating, thank you, amen, for helping us in this endeavor. You can't ever give God more than what God will give back to you. Amen. The songwriter said you can't be God given no matter how hard. You try. Amen. Our deacons. Before we receive our offering, would you please bow your head and join us in a word of prayer? Our Father and our Father, fathers again and once again, we come before your throne of grace. Thanking you, Father, for the privilege to come before your holy and righteous name. Father, we ask now that you bless this offering that we are about to receive. Bless those that gave. Bless those that wanted to give. For some reason, they had not. Father, we will make sure that we use this offering for one thing and one thing only. That is to uplift your kingdom on this side. Father, these and all our blessings we ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Oh my 
While I am on this Jesus journey, yes. Oh, I want Jesus, nobody but Jesus to hold my hand. How many of us want Jesus to walk with you? Amen, amen. It is now altar call. It is time that you bring to the altar that that you may have on your heart and mind that you may be dealing with. Would you stand if there's anyone today that would like to come to the altar to give God Whatever it is that you've been struggling with, this is your time to come. Brother Kevin, could you play softly, I Need Thee? How many remember that and how many know that, that I need thee? Every hour. I need thee. Sound like someone know this song. Why don't you sing it? out and touch someone if you haven't. All heads bowed and eyes closed. Father God, it's in the name of your son, Jesus, that a few of your humble servants have come. And they've come, Father, recognizing the fact that we need you. We come, first of all, Father, thank you and you for another day. As you watched over us last night as we slept and slumbered, touched us with your finger of love this morning. Protected us as we traveled down dangerous highways and byways. And then, Father, as we entered into your sanctuary, we entered in, Father, to give you all praises, glory, and honor. Because, Father, you kept us from last Sunday to this Sunday. Through our ups and our downs, you kept us. Not that we were so perfect or good, but you kept us. So we have a reason, Father, to just say thank you. To praise and lift up your holy name. You provided, Father, even when we didn't know we had it. You kept us, Father, when we gave up on even ourselves. 
You made a way out of no way. So we just praise you today. A few of your children have come now to the altar. Father, I don't know, but you do. Because nothing catches you by surprise. So, Father, someone may be sick today. And they're placing that sickness at your feet. Someone may not know where the next meal is coming from. But they're placing it at your feet. Someone may be looking for and not sure if they'll have shelter over their head tomorrow. But they're placing it at your feet. Someone may be jobless right now. But they're trusting you right now and placing it at your feet. So whatever the needs are today, Father, we just ask right now that you would have your way. That your will would be done in the lives of your children. We came this day to worship you in spirit and in truth. We came today believing and knowing that you are God and you're God all by yourself. We came today realizing that you are our Alpha and our Omega, our beginning and our end. We came today realizing, Father, that you are the great I am. We came today, Father, realizing that you are the light. You are the way. You are the truth. And everything that we are. Because you are the life. Everything that we want to be is only made possible because of who you are. So, Father, have your way. We ask right now that you would heal, that you would deliver and set free. Someone's been asked to stand in the gap for someone else. Whatever that request is, Father, we give it over to you. We realize that we can't do this of ourselves, but only because of you, because of your grace, your mercy, and your love. We're trusting you. We're believing in you. We know that our ways are not your ways, nor our time is your time. So, Father, we know that whatever we're asking, if it's within your will, Father, that you're working it out, and it will be done at the appropriate time and at the appropriate moment. So we praise you right now. We claim victory right now. Over those things that we have brought before you. We believe right now. That it's going to happen. Healing is taking place. Deliverance is taking place. Those that are bound by their situation and circumstances are being loosed. And freed. It's taking place right now. Oh we praise you. And we lift you up. We ask blessings upon our pastor and first lady as they travel down the dangerous highways. Keep your arms of protection around them that they will arrive and bring, come back to this family at the appropriate time. Then for the man that's going to stand today in John's shoes, we lift him up to you right now. We pray, Father, right now that there may be someone in the midst that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, that when the word go forth, that they would come running and ask them, what must I do to be saved? We thank you now. We praise you. It's in the name of your son and our savior, Jesus Christ. And all of God's children said, amen, amen, amen. amen. Go believing, God is. And that victory has been won in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As you continue to stand, we're going to ask the one that's been appointed for this time to come and break the bread of life with us. Reverend Edward Davis.
Would you come? Heavenly Father, we kiss your presence in this place. Understanding that it is you that has made us and created us. Not for ourselves, but for your glory. And I thank you because you said in your word that that work that you have started you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I stand before you as a lump of nothing. <laughs> Even as Brother Kevin is playing his organ, play me like I'm your instrument. Take these lips finite and speak edifying words to your people. That person that's about to give up, say something that will help them to hold on just a little while longer. For that person that has given up on themselves, oh, I feel your presence in this place. Help them to come back. Understanding as long as they have breath in their body, it's not too late to give their lives to you. Father, hide me behind your cross. I don't want them to see me. I want them to see you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 Can I just do a little bit of that before you go? That's my song. Listen. I love you, Jesus. Come on. I worship. Does anybody feel like I feel today? Come on, all over this house. I love you. More than, anything. More than anything. I can't hear y'all. I can't hear y'all. Y'all don't sing it like you. Come on, sing it like you wrote it. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Said I was your man. I was
While I have you standing, while I have you standing, if you'll open your Bibles with me. You can keep playing, man. That, that sounds good to me. Yeah. Isaiah, the 49th chapter of Isaiah. I just want to read one verse audibly into your hearing on this morning. The 49th chapter of Isaiah. Verse 4. Oh, Jesus. I'm trying to behave myself. If you have it, say amen. amen. The Bible says... Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God, with my God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on today. Again, we kiss the presence of an almighty God and thank him for life, health, and strength. To Jesus, our Savior who did something for us that we could not do for ourselves. I'm grateful to the Holy Ghost that keeps Ed from doing things that he has no business doing. But the Holy Ghost is a keeper, amen. amen. To our pastor in his absence, and we greatly appreciate him for this opportunity to the angel of this house and our first lady in her absence to my brothers who labor in the gospel with us, deacon staff, everybody under the sound of my voice, to my own wife who is home recovering from a procedure that she had on Friday. She really wanted to be here, and so, baby, I love you. And I pray that you would experience God's touch even while you're watching at home. And so we thank you for your love. Your labor is not in vain. That's what we want to talk about today. Your, your, your labor is not, is not in vain. When I am waiting on God for something to try to impart or encourage on today because such a momentous occasion on this grand women's day and this great choir that has been assembled what in less than a week a couple of weeks and so we thank God for the other third is sitting out here and so you guys did a beautiful job come on give them a hand on today. But when we think of different types of labor, it sort of kind of gets your mind to wondering just the type of jobs that some of us have held over the years. Not all of us started out white collars sitting in executive boards, but some of us started out blue collar labor. I can remember when I was a little boy growing up that men would, before they had sidewalks and drainage, we had ditches. 
And my daddy would constantly tell me, boy, I'm not raising no ditch digger. But somebody had to do it. Or else when it rained, the streets would flood. And so for a time, we had physical labor and those men wore blue collars and we called them ditch diggers, but their labor <laughs> was not in vain. Even we have some white collar laborers. They still use their hands, but in some ways they are a little bit higher than our blue collar workers. They sometimes have to put their educations to work. I don't know about you, but I'm in a field where I have people who have all kinds of degrees, uh, but we are uh, helping people get modifications at Nation Star. At the end of the day, the labor that you do is not, is not in vain. Those who work in hospitals, our doctors, they assist us in physical needs, our mental distresses. They seek ways to comfort us in our pain and sometimes have the tough task of letting us know when only God can get the job done. Yet and still, their labor is not, is not in vain. I look at our service members, those who have put their lives on the line from way back. Brother Carl, sitting in here, living testimony, living history. If you have all get a moment to just get down and let him talk to you about some of the things that he went through. Oh my God! It just, 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 it just, it just, it just, it just. I have no words to explain because it, 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 the history books can't tell you what somebody actually saw with their own eyes, and so it, 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 your labor, brother Carl, is not, it's not in vain. It, it's because of the sacrifice that your generation made. Yeah. I just I just wanna I just wanna stop and give you some flowers while you can hear me. It's the gener it's the sacrifice that your generation made that I'm speaking English right now. Yeah. Yo, y'all take that for granted. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, okay. All right. I I'm grateful. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to speak any other language. Well, I don't have to. I'm in America. Amen. However, however, in, in this particular text, uh, there is a labor that is strictly reserved, strictly reserved for women. Yeah. Mothers? Mothers? Any mothers? Well, my mothers, mothers, mothers. Labor. Enough said. Listen, I've been in the room. I was I was there like four times. I was there. Whew. I'm trying to give God praise and glory and I'm worried at the same time. How you feeling? You all right? Shut up. <laughs> you should be laying down here. I know, baby. But God know who can handle it. Come on, clap your hands. But this labor, this labor, this labor, this labor that we look at, the text points to the type of labor that describes a travailing, not always physically, but sometimes spiritually. It's like God is pulling at you to do a work, 
you know what he's told you to do. You've been given clear instructions. Uh, yet and still, it's taken you a little bit longer in the labor process uh, to birth what God is trying to get out of you. So, 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 so even while you're working, doing what you're doing, it, 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 it sometimes becomes a, a pain. Uh, it becomes a pain like contractions. Yeah, it, 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 becomes, it becomes a pain because he's trying to get you to push. And, and you, usually, usually it, it's through the pain, it, it's in the pain that he's trying to get you to push so that what he's trying to birth out of you will go ahead and manifest itself. So, so, it's, so it's difficult for him, it's difficult because he don't want to hurt you. But sometimes pressure has to be applied. Y'all, y'all, y'all feel me? Okay. Listen, listen. The, the, the labor pointed me in a different direction. It pointed me uh, Thursday night. I stopped by. Uh, they, they were having choir rehearsal. And, 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 and just, just touched on this uh, briefly, but Proverbs 31. Yeah, yeah you, you know the verse. Uh, Proverbs, who can find a virtuous woman? Uh, for her worth is far above rubies. Uh, the, 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 I, I let them know Thursday the thing about rubies uh, that they're incredibly rare, uh, incredibly rare. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, uh, geologists are really not sure. Uh, they can sort of kind of tell you a little bit this piece and that piece, uh, but they are really not sure how rubies are made. Uh, a matter of fact, they call them geological miracles. Uh, the fact that uh, these elements can come together over time, they have to be pressed on for years. Years. Pressure, 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 pressure. And then finally, this raw, ugly thing comes out. Yeah, it's, 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 it's raw. And, and, it, and it's unattractive. It, it, it's very, very unattractive. It's not something that you would put on your finger and wear around. It, it's not. But, but, but after God gets to shaping on it and prying on it and chipping away and injecting this and heating up that, and after, after a while it becomes this pretty amber red. And the, thing of, and the thing of it is, it's the second hardest element known to man. It, it, it's the second hardest element known to man behind the diamond. But the diamond is more prevalent. And this is why the Bible says, who can find a virtuous woman? Because her, her worth is like finding a ruby that's already ready to go. I don't know about you, but I, 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 I thank God for the ruby. <laughs> she not here today, but she listening. That's cool points. <laughs> but look at the text. Look at the text. Look at the text. The Bible says, then I said, I have labored in vain. The writer here makes a personal declaration. He says, then I said. In order to know why he is bold in this declaration is because uh, just before in the previous verses uh, he let the people know that the Lord had called him uh, from his mother's womb yeah if you don't know uh, nothing else uh, you need to know your place in God if you don't know if you don't know anything else you 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 have to know what he set you aside to do. You, yeah, it, 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 it's rare for him to use you uh, to your full uh, potential. 
Uh, if, if I don't have the gift of speaking, yet I'm trying to speak. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's difficult for him to use me if I'm trying to sing, but I can't hold a note. Uh, it's difficult for him to use y'all not listening to me it, it's difficult for him to use me if I'm trying to go over here but he's told me to stand still so it's difficult it's difficult for him to do what he wants to do with me because I've got to learn my place not only not only your place but but where uh, uh, where your calling lay in that place uh, yeah so 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 yeah, you, you can know that you've been called, you can know that you've been chosen to do something, but still if I'm not operating in the call like I'm supposed to operate in it, what I'm doing has no worth. It has no power. Uh, in, in that your labor might just be in vain. It, it might just be. But, 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 but the Bible tells us that the things that we do for Christ will last. Amen? And, and so even though I might be toiling in somebody Somebody else is lame. Brother, brother, I'm careful not to tall in Brother Kevin's lane. I'm careful, I'm careful not to play in my, my mother took me to piano lessons and oh, 10 years of my life that I can't get back. Just, just trying to play Beethoven and stuff like that. I'm, I want to church God in Christ. I don't want to church God in Christ. I can't play dun, 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 dun. When they play, I, can't, I couldn't make it fit. It wouldn't work. So, so I have to remember to stay in my lane. He, he called me out off the organ and <laughs> just sing in front of it. And it works. It works. You got to stay in your lane. So we look at it, we look at it, he says not only that, but then he allows, God does, uh, us to choose uh, in the work, because of your work, that you've been told to do. Now, now if, if God is going to use you, then it really doesn't matter who says no. It doesn't matter who says no. They tell me your gifts will make room for you. Yes. So, so if God has called you to do something and set you apart, no matter how you try to duck, hide, dodge, you're going to say something to somebody and they're going to hear it and say, oh, I knew. Yeah, yeah. Sister so-and-so, let her speak this time. Because she said something to me that I, only God could have given her. But yo, you, you can't hide what God has given you to use for the upbuilding of the kingdom. You, you can't do that. You can't do that. Not only so, but then the writer moves and makes another personal assessment of himself. Anybody assess yourself? Really? Honestly, you honestly assess yourself? All right. I know me. Well, I'll get my report card. I'll be at the altar. Are you sure you safe? But he makes a personal assessment. He says, I have labored in vain. just want to take a quick minute here to encourage our mothers that are in the house today that you leave this place knowing that the baby may not ever remember you staying up all night they, they, may, they may never they remember, never remember the sacrifices that you made to get them through the night. They may not remember the time you missed off work trying to get them better. They may not remember the time that, that you literally had to hold them laying in their vomit, laying in their fecal matter, laying in whatever it is that they were spitting out of their bodies. 
they may not never remember. But God does. They may not ever remember the bedtime stories. They may not ever remember daddy being there. It works the other way. They may not ever remember mama being there. But at some point and some time, recollection begins to take hold. Even in that, they may never remember the abuse that you took. They, when you were looking for love, doing the best that you could, and you found a rascal. It's a sensitive subject. It's, it's sensitive. Yeah, they, they got campaigns running on the NFL now. They were trying to Stop the violence. You know. The babies may not ever remember the black eyes, the bruises, trips to the hospital. The baby may not ever remember, but God does. And the things that you had to go through, the stuff that you had to put up with, the trials, the tribulations, the pain, the suffering, it was not in vain. You may never remember the courage it took you to get up and walk out. may never remember that they came to you and tried to comfort you because you were crying. They may never remember God does. And your labor is not in vain. This word labor in this particular text it literally means to toil, grow weary, or cause to go tossingly. This Christian race, we all have moments involving hard and tedious work. We look at it in so many different ways because Y'all know we have Jennifer now, and she's that sponge age. Right there about to turn two. And you'd be surprised the words that she can formulate in her mouth. Yes. You have to be extremely careful because the words that you want her to use, like go to the bathroom and she can't say that yet. She, she can't say that yet. But, but she can say other things. And, 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 and we're working with her. Uh, you know, all the little twos and uh, flashcards. And you know, my baby can read. And all these different things. And, 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 and trying, to help, trying to help her to be able to use her words instead of pointing and saying that. Uh, no. Use your words. Juice. That's close enough. But, 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 but the, the, the thing is, the thing is, is that she's learning each and every day. It's, it's almost like a job for her with her leap pad going back and forth through it, learning her ABCs. I mean, I've never seen a child with this kind of attention span. She'll sit with it for hours. Just leave her alone. Just, she fine. The A says, ah. 
be sent by. I mean, and just and she'll start it all over again. I'm like, wow. And she just stays there for, for hours, and then she'll stop and get some juice and go back to work. <laughs> but we work to purchase the tools to help her vernacular. Because we understand that at some point her words will be important. Even in the church, we work. We put our life's work to work in our Good Samaritan situations sometimes leave our labor in a situation where it's not given a second thought. You extend yourself to help someone do the best that you can to get them from point A to point B. And it's like those ten lepers that Jesus healed. Ten were cleansed and only one came back and said thank you. And sometimes it ain't even about getting the money back. Some, sometimes, it's, sometimes, it's not. sometimes it's just the fact that you remembered and said thank you. Jesus, I didn't have to do that. I, I didn't. I didn't have to give you a dime. But thank you. Thank, thank you so much. It works so well. Thank y'all for your beautiful singing this morning. Thank you. Don't you feel good? <laughs> y'all something else. Listen. But the word here to labor. And then he says, in vain. Here he's saying at a point where he would soon rather give up than keep trying to do what he is doing. He's at a point where the work he is doing is leaving him uh, an empty feeling. A feeling of no purpose. A feeling that the service he is rendering is for I don't know if you've ever gotten to a place where you were sick and tired of your job. I may be preaching to myself. But you get, you get sick and tired of the same old thing. Every day if your job changes, it's a beautiful thing. I know change is hard to come by. But, 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 but to have yourself in a position where you feel like you're unappreciated. And it don't matter whether you're here or not. But in the kingdom, he put that on the wall for a reason. You're important, you need it, and you're necessary because God only made one of you. Even if you have a twin, you're still only one person. And so what God has called you to do, you shouldn't leave to anybody else. Why would I leave preaching to somebody else this Sunday? Now he, he called and asked me. So in that, I'm to operate in what God has given me. And so each and every one of us sitting, uh, the term that we used to use in the old days, I used to hear my grandparents say, boy, every tub have to sit on his own bottom. And the tub, he talking about the number three tubs. You know. I have never had to take a bath in one either. I'm not that old. But literally he says, literally he says, in the next clause he says, I have spent my strength for naught. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we focus on the negative. And God wants us to elevate into a place like into which we've never seen before. Levels of blessings that our parents never thought were possible. But we get caught up in 
what I've spent, how much time I put in, what I did, and I this and I that. And it turns the attention away from the one who gave you strength to do what you did. It's a constant struggle with our flesh. Man will tell you with a finished project that I'm all used up. I'm exhausted now. But in the word, in the word, I heard Isaiah say, they that wait on the Lord. shall renew their strength and they shall mount up on wings like eagles and they shall run not get weary they shall walk the writer says and my strength my strength let's my strength let's talk about my strength for a minute my strength is subject to be cut off at any time. My strength is just enough for me to forget adding anybody else to my strength. Because my strength is fickle at best. Even at my peak it was only so long that I could run. Even at my peak, there was only so many laps that I could take before succumbing to tired, for having to stop and rest. Your strength without God will always equal up to not enough. Your, your strength your strength. You, you, can, you can try to do it on your own if you want. But at some point, at some time, you will grow weary in that situation because you are doing it on your own strength. So the writer here injects the fact that his strength and his power has to come from God. The New Testament tells us that I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Uh, when my strength meets walk on water power, I can accomplish all things. When my strength meets Jesus who died on Calvary's cross, I can do all things. He told me to be not weary in my well-doing, for in due season I shall reap. My strength will end up for naught, but with Christ it will last. Finally, the writer shows us where his, his confidence is placed. He says... In the text, yet surely my judgment is, is with the Lord. Says, surely. The writer here makes a definite and definitive plea when he says, yet surely. Regardless of how I feel about the way that I'm going about doing what God has given me to do, he says, yet surely, even though I feel like the things that I do around the church may not be honored, uh, even though I may feel like the things that I do for my family at my home, 
yet surely. Even though it feels like the days when I go over and above on my job and the supervisor say nothing about it, but yet surely. So he literally says here in the text that my confidence is in, uh, in the Lord. He said, yet surely my judgment. Mm, uh, in this text, he, um, uh, it shows that this particular judgment is an act of deciding a case. I don't know about you, but I found now that from time to time that I do things where justice is deserved. But even in my situation where justice is deserved, God will levy unto me mercy because I deserve to be cut off. But even uh, in this situation, uh, he said that judgment is with the Lord. Yeah, the, the Lord, the times that I feel left alone is with the Lord. The days when I've worked tirelessly, years and years, yet not getting any notoriety, he said it's with the Lord. Yeah, the weeks and the days that led to the years that my mother was raising her child all by herself is with the Lord. The days of daddy staying home working with those babies is with the Lord. He says the long hours when there was no compensation for the work that was being done, he said it's with the Lord. The times that I found myself laying prostrate before the Lord, not telling nobody that I was fasting and I was praying for my breakthrough to come. God says everything that you're going through is with the Lord. Ain't the Lord all right? Reach over and tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, my labor is not in vain. My labor is not in vain. Look at somebody and tell them your labor is not in vain. That son that's gone wayward. But the Bible says if you raise them up in the way they should go, they will not depart. So your labor is not in vain. That daughter don't seem like she want to listen. Your labor. Ah! It's not in vain for that lady that's having to raise your niece, for that lady that's having to raise your nephew, for that grandmother that's still having to raise their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren. Your labor! Ah! Your labor! It's not in vain. Oh, it's not in vain. I found out that it's not in vain because 42 generations passed and Jesus came. He went to Calvary. Yes, he did. Somebody said that he hung there. Oh, he hung there. That he died. But one morning, He got up with all power in his hand. And because he's got all power, your labor's not in vain. Because God's got all power, your heartache is not in vain. Because he's got all power, your peace of mind is not in vain. Because God's got all power, somebody ought to say yes. God's got all power. Ah, yes! Ah, yes!
Your labor is not in vain. I want to encourage somebody today. The Bible tells us he that put his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom of God. As long as you are doing what God has told you to do, he died to make your reward. But he said it to us, he said, I'll go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And then he said, if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. So you're waiting on your mansion on this side and you might miss it on the other. I don't, I'd rather live like I'm living now and get my mansion on the other side because over on that side, they can't take it away from me. Over on that side, I don't have to worry about foreclosure. Over on that side, I don't have to worry about paying the light bill. Over on that side, I don't have to worry about paying the water bill. Over on that side, it'll be nothing but Sunday morning. The Sabbath shall have no end. Listen, I encourage you today to know that what you're doing for God is going to last. And if nobody ever tell you thank you, it's okay. It's, it's all right. If, if nobody ever pat you on the back, or give you a plaque if nobody ever hand you a trophy if nobody ever stand you out front and say listen sister so and so did this that and the other to help this program go over you might have worked the hardest and it don't matter but if nobody ever tell you thank you what you do for Christ will last that person that you affected they won't know but you still have a jewel in your crown. Amen. 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 God bless you today. The doors of the church are open. I don't know what you, or where you find yourself. But God is willing and able to do just what you need him to do. That person that's not quite sure that heaven will be your home can think of no better day than today to, to make Jesus your choice. And make him Lord of your life. You're looking for a home, a place where you can worship and feel free. Can think of no better place than friendship. The word of God is being preached, and God is able. The doors of the church are open. Would you come? As the choir sings. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Oh. shall be added all of these things shall be added all these things shall be added unto
thank you for joining us by live streaming for our worship service today. We are now in the process of extending an invitation in our sanctuary, but I want to also extend an invitation to you, our viewers, if you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, that you might get to know him today. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. So if you are a non-believer and you would like to confess Jesus Christ, if you want to become a Christian today, all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And it's just that simple. You are saved. Also, if you're interested in having us to pray for you, you can visit our website. There's a place there for you to submit a prayer request. Or if you're interested in becoming a member of the Friendship Baptist Church in the colony, you can also visit our website and there is a place there for you to make that request also. But most of all, thank you for joining us today via live streaming as we worship our God in spirit and in truth. May God bless you and keep you and may you have a blessed week. Amen. We thank God for what he has done here today.